and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to do a question from paper 3, variant 32, October, November 2018, question 6, based on budgeting and investment appraisal. This is the information about Stanley, who is a sole trader for many years and have a year ending at 31st December. He is preparing a cash budget and provided us with the following information for three months period from July 19 to September 2019. The total income of $120,000 from trade receivable for credit sales will be collected on equal amounts over the three months period. And the cash sales are expected to be 25% of the cash collected each month from the credit sales. There will be no trade receivable at 1st July 2019. Total credit purchases of 75,000 will be paid for in equal amounts over the three months period. Cash purchases are expected to be 20% of the cash paid each month for credit purchases. There will be no trade payable at 1st July 2019. The bank balance on 1st July 2019 is expected to be $3,500. Stanley is expected to receive a bank loan of $30,000 on 1st August 2019, the interest will be payable monthly or in areas at 5% per annum. No capital will be repaid until uh, July 2020. New machines costing $60,000 will be purchased by check on 15th August 2019. Stanley's policy is to depreciate the machinery at 25% per annum using the straight line method. A full year's depreciation is charged in the year of acquisition. Stanley rent pa uh, part of his business premises for $6,000 per annum and receives this rental income on a monthly basis. General expenses are paid for in the month of the following that in which they are incurred. General expenses incurred in June amounted to be $6,000. They are expected to increase by 5% in July 2019 and further 5% in August 2019. Stanley makes annual cash drawings of $15,000 in equal installment on 1st January and 1st July each year. In the ABET of the question, we are asked to state three advantages of making the cash budget. Cash budget helps the business to identify the cash surplus. If there is a cash surplus, it means that the business is not investing its cash appropriately and there is a lot of cash which is lying in the business which can be invested for the payment of the trade payables and they can get a huge amount of discount if the amount is paid before time or this can be invested in other ways where they can have a higher return. Hence, cash budget helps in identifying the cash surplus so the business may invest the cash more appropriately. Apart from that, there are times when the business may face a cash deficit. So, with the help of cash budget, we can find the duration during which the business may face cash deficit. Most of the profitable businesses fail in the market because they have to declare insolvency. Insolvency is a phase where the business may not have liquid assets to pay the current liabilities. So this happens when there is a liquidity crisis or a cash deficit and cash budget helps in identifying the cash deficit whereupon the business can find the various means of external finances to overcome this liquidity crisis by like by means of a bank overdraft or they can arrange a short term loan to overcome this deficit. Apart from that, when we make the cash budget, we plan the different targets like what should be the cash sales, what should be the trade receivable period, what should be the credit sales. So when we plan these targets and also we also identify the duration during which we may have a cash surplus or a cash deficit. So when everything is planned properly and naturally when we plan things, we uh, the businesses organize the resources to achieve this plant targets and hence a cash budget helps in cash flow planning and controlling and moreover it also ensures that the targets are met and when the targets are planned properly and the resources are organized to achieve this target more in a more better way then naturally this motivates the employee because the employee will now know that what is expected from them and how they are going to achieve it. So cash budget also acts as a mean of motivation to the staff. 
Apart from that, when we make the master budget, we start from the key budget where we find the key factors which are required to fulfill the organization goal and after that we make the departmental budget and cash budget can also act as a link for to the other budgets thereby it facilitates the strategic planning with the other departments so the so as the master budget can be achieved apart from that in bbit we are asked to prepare the cash budget for each of the three months beginning from 1st july 2019 so we will start making the budget before making that, we'll always start with the working notes. So let's do the working notes and then we will make the budget. So the first working note which we have here is the total income of $120,000 from the trade receivable for credit sales will be collected in equal amounts over three months period. That means this amount should be divided equally so that we can calculate the total trade, trade receivable for each month. So we are going to take this that is 120,000 times 1 by 3 we get 40,000 which will be the trade receivable for each month and this will be the cash inflows when we make the cash budget. Next we are going to find the cash sales. In cash sales uh, it is stated that 25% of whatever is collected from the trade receivable will be the cash sale for that month. So we are going to take 40,000 times 25% that is 10,000 which will be the cash sales for each month and this will be the cash inflow when we make the cash budget. Then next we are going to find the total credit purchases of 75,000 will be paid for in equal amounts over the three months period that is we are going to pay the trade payable in equal amounts by taking the 75,000 we are going to multiply it by one, one third so we get 25,000 which will be the trade payable for the credit purchases which will be the cash outflow when we make the cash budget. Next we are going to calculate the cash purchases which are 20% of the credit purchases. Credit purchases we calculated as 25,000 so 20% of this will be 5,000 as cash purchases for each month. Next Stanley is expected to receive a bank loan of 30,000 on 1st August 2019. So this will be the cash inflow in the month of August. Interest will be payable monthly in areas of 5% per annum. So we are receiving this loan in August. So for September, for one month, we need to calculate the interest which will be 30,000 times 5% which is the rate of interest times 1 by 12 for only one month. So it will be $125 which will be the cash outflow in the month of September. Then Stanley uh, rent part of his business premises for $6,000 per annum and receives this rent income on monthly basis. So for each month he is going to receive the rent and we are going to calculate for one month how much he is receiving and then we will make, it, make, uh, make this as a cash inflow in our cash budget. So 6,000 times 1 by 12 which will be $500 which will be the cash inflow in the cash budget. Then general expenses are paid for in the month following that in which they have been incurred. So if it is incurred in June we are going to pay it in July. So general expenses incurred in June is $6,000 so this will be the cash outflow as general expenses in the month of July. Then there is they are expected to increase by 5% in July. So there will be 5% increase of this means 6,000 plus 6,000 times 5% which will be 6,300 and this will be incurred in July but again it will be written in August because we are going to pay it in the following month. So this we are going to mention it as a cash outflow in August. And in August what happened is in August there is a further 5% increase. So we are going to take the value which we have calculated for July and then we are going to add the further 5% of it that is 6,300 times 5% which will be the additional increase and this will be the general expenses for August but again we are going to pay it in the month of September so this will be a cash outflow in the month of September. Let's make the cash budget for July, August and September. We'll start with the receipts where we have the cash sales which we calculated in the second working notes as 10,000 for each month then trade receivable that is the credit sales from where uh, which we have calculated in the first working notes. Now we are going to receive the money from our debtors when we have made the 
credit sales so we have calculated in the first working note for each month we are going to receive forty thousand dollars which we have mentioned here then the bank loan which uh, we have received in the month of august this, this will be an inflow so this is the bank loan in the month of august then uh, rental income which was calculated in the sixth working notes as 500 each month so that will be mentioned here and we'll add it up and find the total cash inflows next we are going to find the total cash outflows by taking all the payments so we'll start with the cash purchases which was calculated in the fourth working notes as five thousand per month and then again we have trade payable this was the credit purchases and now we are going to pay our credit cards each month so it will be twenty five thousand which was done in the third working notes twenty five thousand each month is mentioned here then general expenses which was calculated in the seventh working note is mentioned here then machinery which was purchased in the month of august and for this we have paid sixty thousand dollars so this will be a cash outflow which is mentioned here then stanley have uh, withdrawn some money in the month of july which is drawings and which is again a cash outflow which is mentioned here then the interest which have to be paid on the loan which we have taken only in the month of September which we calculated in the fifth working notes will be mentioned here. Then we are going to add this all up and find the total payments that will be the total cash outflows. It was given that the opening balance of uh, our bank account uh, of Stanley's bank account on 1st July was 3000 five hundred dollars and then we take the net cash flows how do we get this net cash flows we'll take the inflows net cash inflows minus net cash outflows we get this as seven thousand that is fifty thousand five hundred minus forty three thousand five hundred we get seven thousand as the net cash flow and we add this up and this become our closing balance closing balance of july will be the opening balance for august so we are going to have this as opening balance for august and again the net cash flow by taking eighty thousand five hundred minus six ninety six thousand three hundred we get a deficit of fifteen thousand eight hundred and then after taking this total that is ten thousand five hundred minus fifteen thousand eight hundred we'll get the closing balance in deficit as five thousand three hundred dollars this closing balance will be the opening balance for the month of september and in september our net cash inflows is fifty thousand five hundred we'll subtract the net cash outflows which is thirty six thousand seven forty we get the net cash flow as thirteen thousand seven sixty and once we total this up that is uh, five thousand three hundred we will subtract it from thirteen thousand seven sixty we get the closing balance as eight thousand four sixty dollars and with this we complete the cash budget for the first three months further additional information is given which states that stanley has calculated the uh, payback period for the new machine as four years he has been advised to evaluate his purchases using the net present value method and pv method discuss how the npv method might give stanley a more accurate evaluation compared to the payback method in npv method we consider the time value of money that is the present value of future cash flows by taking discount factors into consideration which is not done in the payback method hence npv will be more accurate method of calculating the investment appraisal apart from that and pv consider all the cash flows for the life of the project like say if the project is for eight years and pv will consider all the cash flows for this eight years whereas in payback uh, method only we consider the cash flows until the initial investment is recovered here stanley is considering only four years period for in which he is recovering his investment so when calculating the payback method he will consider the cash flows only for four years which may not give an accurate picture of the investment appraisal hence npv will be a better method however npv is a bit complex when compared to uh, payback in terms of calculation but it will give you a better evaluation as npv takes into consideration the time value of money as well as it take into consideration all the cash flows for the life of the project hence it is better to calculate the investment appraisals using npv method with this we complete this question thanks for watching my videos and have a blessed life